on screen we have the, um, the scan data from the original cheek piece. You can see there the cheek piece triangulation, the actual surface that we extracted from the scan data. Once we've got the form, we used another software so we could make the relief of all the patterns. You can see underneath that is all the 2D drawings that we extracted from the scan data and also the photographs to give us the, uh, the perfect, perfect patterns. turn this digital image of the neck guard into this, the almost finished neck guard. We start with a basic leather flap onto which we're going to have to put all of these metal extras. So we start with a sheet which we water jet cut to give us the outline of this place. This is a preparatory piece, laser cut in plastic. That eventually gives us this will go on the neck guard. To make the, uh, the pattern pieces, each of these pieces has been 3D printed in wax, cast in bronze and then polish finished. This piece incorporates using the new technology and the old traditional skills of a jeweller and metalsmith. So these pieces have been printed with rapid prototyping, then cast, and then I've polished them and finished them as you would in any other traditional jewellery techniques, using these sorts of tools that would have been used throughout the ages. Nothing different. So it's a real marriage, all this work, between new technology and the traditional skills that have been carried through with a metalsmith and a jeweller. manufacturing process we've had to work out is for the stamped parts. So we have stamped panels and stamped strips. There are 16 panels and two long strips that go round the circumference of the helmet. In order to make the panels we had to create a file on a computer aided design program uh, which we then used to CNC mill, computer numerically controlled mill, the cutting, the, the stamping tools into which we place a blank piece of copper, put the thing together under a press and strike it hard, which then gives us a stamped relief. From that we have to begin to polish it, which gives us a finish like this, and then when it's super polished, we gold plate. With the strips, these tools are what we call in the jewellery industry follow-on tools. So as you put them together and you put your piece of strip through them, every time you strike a blow, you move the strip along a couple of centimetres, strike a blow, move the strip along, and that gives us continuous strips of identical pieces. And this is one of the pieces then after it's been polished, ready to be gold plated, and this one's just waiting to go into the gold plating bath. This is the material that we're using to make the reeded strip. And it's a copper strip and it's work hardened at the moment, so it needs to be annealed. And annealing is just softening the metal so it makes it more malleable so we can work with it. Um, 
and within that, there are sort of organic elements that we can bring into the helmet that have been studied. So within the crest pieces, which will go on top, we discovered that in the lining of that was beeswax and animal glue and um, calcium carbonate. So that's sort of a, a paste. And what we believe was sitting in that paste is a horsehair crest. And this is what we've, this is sort of a mock-up of this, and this will sit on top of the helmet. Um, and we've used matter dye, so traditional things that the Anglo-Saxons would have had available to them to sort of yeah, finish off the helmet and bringing in those aspects of the wider, larger research project.